where I live, about three miles from there, there's a fort. And something very peculiar happened there. A farmer owned it one time, a hard-working man, one of the old class of farmers, one of these fellows that'll work and work and work until they drop. He was in his 80s. Now, he hadn't any of the modern machinery. Pick and spade man. That was the kind of man he was. I've known a few of them. And by the Lord, most of them lived until their 80s and 90s. He was not going to retire. Now, he was married. His wife died before him. And he had one son. Now, the same man, as I said, he was in his 80s. And still working, still working, work, work. And the son, do your calculations, the son was in middle age by then. And all of his own equals, they had got married and were beginning to raise families of their own. But he couldn't, for the very simple reason that his father wouldn't make over the farm. Why? Because he was healthy. Now, this fort was on the land. And the sun was constantly, constantly, why? Who knows? Uh, we'll shift that out of it. We'll shift that, just taking up space. And it wasn't. What space does a fort take up after all? And the cattle were able to go in there and graze, uh, just taking up no space at all. But the old man, no, no, leave it be. That was there before my time and is going to be there after me. You know, he was, he was a civilized kind of a man. But the son, one of the new style, no, level the place. No, the father wouldn't hear of it. And when the son would be in the pub at night having his pint, uh, complaining about the father and this old goddamn bloody fort, his friends would say, will you leave him alone? You're only annoying him. Agree with him, agree with him. And can't you do what you like with the fort when you have the farm yourself? And the son growling and snarling because, like I say, he was annoyed partly because he wasn't getting married himself and couldn't when he had nothing to back him up. So eventually, eventually, he said to the father one day, he says, I'm going. I'm leaving this goddamn place. I'm going to England on the buildings. And finally, the father came to his senses and said, oh, Lord, no, all right, all right, all right. We'll go into Ennis tomorrow and we'll send the place over. He was afraid of being left there on his own because he looked like a man that could live for years yet. So they did go into Ennis, into their solicitor, and the place was signed over. <laughs> and the son was delighted. He did nothing for a while. And he says he'd play it calm now, calm now, but he still had his eye on the old fort that was going out of it. <sighs> maybe it was coincidence, maybe it wasn't. But about four or five weeks later, there was a storm one night. And when they came out in the morning, wasn't one of the white pardon bushes that's always in these forts, blown down by the wind. Now, if it had been blown into the fort, fair enough, it'd have been taken up mo no more space, but no, it was blown out into the field outside. And when the sun came out uh, and to look at the cattle or whatever, he saw this bush and the roots up in the air and it laid out. And he says, ah, there it is, more space wasted. And so he says, right, I'm getting the tractor and I'll pull that goddamn thing out of it and dump it below on the corner of the field. And his father tried to reason with him, will you leave it alone? Because you see, the old people would never touch a bush out of a fort. They'd never even burn that. That belonged to the good people and that belonged to the fort and lay it rot where it fell. And you'll always see that even today. People don't burn a bush in a fort or from a fort. But he wouldn't hear of it. That's going. This is my farm now. I'll do what I like. And the father could not talk him out of it. He got his tractor and he got a cable and looped the old cable around the butt of the bush. Open his tractor and he started to pull it out of it. Now, I don't know whether he misjudged the amount of uh, stones and earth in the roots of the bush or not. But as soon as the strain came on the cable, you know, there he was now pulling it out, looking back, 
gradually pulling it and as soon as the strain came on the cable all of a sudden the cable <laughs> snapped and you know yourself what a cable snapping is like it's like a spring <laughs> snap and <laughs> took the head clean off him killed him on the spot and you know what the neighbour said you know what his own friends said the boys he used to drink with in the pub why in God's name didn't he leave the bloody place like his father said? Would any sane person interfere with a fort?